Vocal topic of the week 17, vocal fry. <laughs> uh, okay, so what's vocal fry? Let me show you what vocal fry is. The queen of vocal fry. Cold, you see me standing, but I'm dying. Did you hear that? On the floating, but I'm dying. Floating, but I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. I never knew. I never knew. I never knew. That little creaky door sound before the sound. Uh, before the right at the start of the phrase that's called vocal fry or another word for that is pulse register um, It's used in pop singing as an effect and it's also used as a way for students to understand the concept of vocal fold closure and to strengthen the transverse arytenoid muscle the one that's responsible for giving clean vocal fold closure. That's what it is um, Let me talk a little bit about there's a controversy around it as to whether it's healthy or not, at least I, there used to be. Um, maybe I, I think it should have um, lessened a bit now, but uh, there, 15 years ago there was. Um, and um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that and talk just to give you the overall of what to do with it, okay? Um, so vocal, uh, so when I was in college um, years and years ago, because I'm old, um, <laughs> I, hopefully I'm not that old, but uh, let's see, this was uh, grad school, you know, so this was in the earlier side of the 2000s and then into undergrad, which was before the 2000s. Um, when, when in school, people talked about fry and it was like, oh, that's terrible. You know, it's going to lower your voice. Don't do fry. It's bad for you. You know, I, that's, I mean, that's all I really knew of it. And classical singing, fry is not a part of the sound anyway, really. I mean, you don't. Uh, it's just, it's just not a, it's not a, a paintbrush that you use in the classical sound a whole lot, if at all, I can really think about. Um, so it wasn't a tool that I used and when I heard about it, it didn't sound like, it didn't sound good and it didn't sound, from the little things I'd heard, I heard it was unhealthy. But there's a lot of misconceptions and things that are swallowed as true in singing because there's so much mystery in the instrument. So I was just like, oh, okay, don't do that. Then, uh, you know, then as I went on with teaching and I, I'd heard that some people were doing things with it and I was curious, but I still I didn't know anything. I didn't know enough about it early on in my teaching to trust it. And uh, then I had a student uh, who had a vocal, uh, had a vocal dysfunction where one of her vocal folds would sort of give out at the top of her, her head voice. And, uh, and so what we sent her to a speech therapist who was studying her voice and the, the end up, uh, the therapy was for her to, Oh, oh, you know, 30, 40 times a day, do these vo vocal fry slides up into her head voice to try to strengthen and make sure that the vocal folds weren't, the one chord wasn't, wasn't giving out um, as she was going up. By the way, fold, chord, uh, those words are ex interchangeable uh, for it to mean the, the tendon, the whole thing that's vibrating in there, okay? Um, so this, this, uh, really well-known speech therapist was giving her these exercises to do and it completely turned me around because I mean, somebody like a, a, a healthcare a specialist in voice therapy and, and health was telling one of my students to do something that I understood as being a da dangerous thing. And so I started digging into it really hard and figuring out what the deal was with it. Um, and I found from a vocal pedagogical standpoint that it's an amazing tool. And when I think about it, it, <laughs> The 15 years ago me would have been shocked at how much vocal fry is a part of the current me's voice studio. Um, I mean, I, I would, can't believe it. I can't believe how much I use it. It's I use it on everybody. I use it on younger voices, more mature voices. Um, it's it's just a great it's a great tool to help people understand ah the, the sensation of vocal fold closure and how to bring those vocal folds into action uh, and also bringing them into action in a way that's not uh, you're not being abrasive or bombastic on the vocal folds you know um, because vocal fry is such a delicate sound ah uh, Ah, uh, you know, it takes very little air, even though it sounds gross and creaky, it takes very little air to make the to make the folds uh, vibrate that way. Because uh, as we look at the vocal folds, you pop them out when we're breathing, the vocal folds are open like this. When you go to sing, the vocal folds close. And when they're closed, 
The transverse arytenoids doing the work. It's closing and squeezing them uh, closed. The cricothyroids, the stretchy one, is not engaged, and uh, the vocalis muscle, which thickens to make chest voice or head voice or uh, the thin, thickened posture, is just chilling out. So the only one working is that squeezer muscle, uh, the transverse arytenoid. So it's a great tool to uh, like like the therapist was when I was referring to my student earlier to strengthen that bringing together of the vocal folds. It's a very inefficient state of singing uh, uh, to be singing with your vocal folds gapped. All right, and there's lots of tricks to help you learn how to get vocal fold closure from thinking of air, thinking of forward resonance, understanding vocal fry. There, you know, there's there's more than one way to do this right. But I found that vocal fry is a really effective tool to help understand uh, vocal fold closure, to protect from banging on the vocal folds when going for big notes. Um, which I'm going to talk about that for just a second. The space between the vocal folds is called the glottis. A glottal stop is when the vocal folds close. And you, instead of like vocal fry, uh, you know, the cords, are, the folds are closed and you're just creaking them into action. When you do a glottal stop, uh, you're banging them into action. And that's the most dangerous sound for the voice. So vocal fry protects you from that. Uh, you know, if you're going for a big note, uh, you can like, instead of going uh, and banging it like that, you could think of, I want to make a gritty pop rock note, uh, and you just put a little fry right before the start of it. <clears throat> even when you're not warmed up like I am, you can still use it. I mean, sometimes it's even better, that little grittier. Um, uh, and you use that, that creaky door effect, and that will stop you from banging your chords because the vocal fry is a very delicate sound. And a glottal stop is not a delicate sound. It's, uh, it's a sound that goes from zero to 100 right away. And so training yourself to use vocal fry instead of glottal stops will protect you. Um, and like I said, I mean, I, I don't mean to be braggy braggy with it, but if there's one thing I'm really proud of, and again, I say it's not, this is possible to not be true. This is possible to eventually not be the case, but um, knock on wood. I've never had anyone have any vocal damage developed with my technique or my study or under my tutelage. And um, it's, I try to make people really aware of the onset of the sound, which is critical, that starting sound, okay? Um, and uh, let's see, have I said everything I need to say? Talked about Demi Lovato, I talked about Fry being in the pop sound, talked about that it's used in therapy, I talked about the controversy. People think it's damaging. Um, oh, I didn't talk about one other thing. Um, there's a, an epidemic about this. Uh, like, you, if you read online about Fry, you'll see people talk about Fry. Like, um, a lot of uh, that. There's an epidemic of it damaging voices, and well, about and that's in reference to speech, the way that people speak. Um, vocal Fry. If you listen. Uh, when someone speaks on vocal fry, uh, they're talking like this all the time. I don't know why I always do a valley girl voice from California when I do my speaking. <laughs> anyway, like people do speak like vocal fry. It's like, you know, you're trying to put on your cool voice or whatever. Um, and, and vocal fry, if you're going to use it in speech. I, you, if you use it as an aside. Sometimes I'll, so if I'm talking and then it's, uh, yeah, well, actually, that's not what he said. You know, you, it's, a, it's a function used in normal speech. But if people speak on it constantly and that's their, com their normal state of vocal function, then what happens? happens is um, think about it well think about it. Um, this becomes a dangerous thing for for the the muscles around the larynx and it's something that a lot of speech the otolaryngology speech therapists have to correct what do muscles do well when I what I told you was the, the cricothyroid uh, it's closing and that's what's working when you make that sound the stret the one that stretches for pitch is not working and the thickener is not working so those muscles imagine you, you speak like that for a, a month two months five months a year what does a muscle do that's not used at all? It atrophies. These tendons, these muscles, these vocal folds, they start giving up. They start quitting on the whole process of making sound. In addition to that not being your muscle memory. So you've trained this muscle memory that when you talk, this happens. And you're used to not using air. So that's how you talk. And then you get used to this vocal function. And the other muscles start becoming deficient. So you have to relearn how to talk. In that way, vocal, vocal fry is damaging if that's the only, if that's how you speak but using it as a vocal effect in your singing it's not going to hurt you it could protect you if you have a tendency to bang on your voice um, it's also a great tool to teach you how to strengthen oh keep so the chords oh don't get breathy oh 
to keep them from blowing apart. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you have, please leave comments, questions below, leave your opinions. If you completely disagree with me and you feel that uh, my philosophy on, uh, on vocal fry is ruining the world of singing and I'm damaging every voice I, I, I'm working with, then uh, I guess let's have a talk about that too. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I just have to say I've been doing it for years and it hasn't hurt anybody. So anyway, um, that's Vocal Fry. I talked about it for 10 minutes. I went too long, but whatever. Uh, I'm sure I'll think of a couple things I didn't say. So watch this so I don't have to say all this stuff again in your lesson. Uh, have a great day. Have a great week. I'm behind on one. I've got one more uh, topic of the week coming because last week was so busy I didn't get my one done. So have a great week.